So why were they taken off the show after they were booked? They weren't booked by, uh, no, I mean, nothing was really booked until I took over. I think there was some stuff that had been announced, but they had never been announced on the show. And given some of the stuff on the show, I thought, you know, like for example, I, and I really like him a lot. I like Killer Cross and Scarlet. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they were specifically locked into any match or specific thing, although it's possible the prior management had talked to them. I think the prior management had talked to a lot of people. Um, but, you know, I tried to stay true to the stories of Ring of Honor and I want to build a new era of Ring of Honor and I tried to feature a lot of the former names and a lot of names of the past and also debut some people in Ring of Honor for the first time, some wrestlers from AEW like Brian Cage and Swerve and others. Uh, and then, like, you know, it, it was very cool and there's a lot of people who have history in Ring of Honor who've wrestled there in the past or even recently who were in AEW. Um, so, I, I thank you for saying you like the show and I, I thought uh, it came out great, uh, but yeah, when I, when I took over the, the booking, I think there had only been uh, a few things announced, and that wasn't one of the things, and, and there was no match locked in or anything, but total respect for both of them, and uh, you know, could have easily seen that fitting in too. Great, thanks. Connor? Hey Tony, I just want to start by saying congratulations on a crazy first event with Ring of Honor. Um, I know we're fresh off of it, but have you, do you have any updates as far as touring for Ring of Honor, television deals, or when the next event will be? I cannot give that information yet, but I wanted to make sure that this is a really special night. Uh, I consider it a transition show. Uh, it's been a while since Final Battle, and you know, last month, uh, it's been about a month now that I announced the, the agreement to purchase Ring of Honor. And uh, this show, they, they had committed to some people. To Nick's point, there were matches that had been announced and there were tickets that had been sold. And, you know, Gresham versus Bandito for the undisputed title uh, had been announced and, and a few other matches too. And, you know, like I said, they'd sold a few hundred tickets and they'd also made agreements with the pay per view providers. And I didn't feel right backing out on the fans or the, the business. And I thought we would make the best of a situation. I never expected to be here. This weekend, I you know I love being here with the fans. I cannot get out of this weekend fast enough uh, <laughs> and go back to Jacksonville. Uh, but uh, it was a unique situation to do it this year. Um, and and uh, with Ring of Honor having made the commitment, I thought it was the right thing to do. It was weird having Rampage on and a great Rampage. If you guys haven't seen it yet, it's a great show. Like I'm really proud of both shows tonight. You, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, there's a lot to look forward to. Is uh, you know, the Young Bucks were advertised, they were in two places at once. Uh, and Young Bucks versus Top Flight's a great match. Uh, Jamie Hayter versus Sky Blue is a great match. The uh, House of Black versus Fuego Del Sol and Uno and Stu is a great match. And we had an amazing main event with Powerhouse Hobbs versus Keith Lee. It is a great main event when you see it. So it's just a great night of wrestling. And it was surreal uh, having both shows on the same night. And uh, it was surreal being a part of this, coming to Ring of Honor, you know, meeting people for the first time. Uh, having Tony Schiavone in the back helping out is pretty surreal. How many times have we all watched the last episode of Nitro? Yeah. And Tony's getting produced by <laughs> new people and it's a surreal situation. And you know, they didn't even take Tony with them, which they may have regretted during that Buff Bagwell versus Booker T match. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, not because of anything those guys did. And Scott Hudson and Arn are fine, but like I don't think Scott Hudson and Arn had ever called a match together. And that's one of the things I thought was good about having Caprice and Ian together tonight. They have a lot of chemistry and experience together. I didn't want to put like a first team time team out there because Arn and Scott are both great announcers, but they just didn't have the chemistry. So I thought it was unusual on like, you know, in front of millions of people at that point to put a new team on the air and I don't think it really felt authentic to the millions of people who watch WCW. So I did want to try to capture an authentic experience and you know, it was, it, it was a Ring of Honor show. It was very different from what we would do with AEW. There were different people involved and I tried to do as many things from the onset to make it authentic to the Ring of Honor fan but also make it clear we're like launching a new era and the whole thing was awesome. Uh, so, no, thank you, the, that's, that's a, Good question to ask. I'm not sure where it's going to end up uh, and when it's going to happen, but we've had a really good conversation with Warner Media. I think they're really impressed by what we've done with it, and they were really cool because I have a TV contract, and they didn't have to let me do this show. And and what ring, you know what Ring of Honor was and what they, what it, it would have been, um, they could have prevented me from producing this show, and they let me. And then 
even tried to make an event of tonight with promoting Rampage and Ring of Honor and some crossover with obviously the Young Bucks, you know, wrestling on Rampage and doing a run in here, Swerve wrestling on Supercard and, and uh, you know, hey, maybe Swerve shows up on Rampage if, if, if you haven't seen it yet. So, uh, um, and so I thought it would be a lot of fun and, and those, those kind of uh, going, kind of guys going both ways and, uh, and, and they were very supportive of us doing this. I think they wanted it to be a Ring of Honor show and not an AEW show, which is great because that's what I wanted too. So we were totally on the same page. I promised them I'm not going to go do an AEW show and, and try to cut you guys out of it. And, uh, and they were just really great. And uh, I think it's really cool. There are a lot of exciting things happening at Warner Media right now. And I'm really glad we're a part of them um, with AEW. And I hope Ring of Honor can be a part of it too. And I'm really optimistic that it can because of the really good track record that the women and men of AEW have uh, putting on great shows and working hand in hand with Warner Media. You know, it was a really good week for us the last few weeks. Dynamite has ranked in the top three shows on cable. Uh, the only two show, both times, the only thing that's beaten us in the last few weeks has been the ESPN NBA doubleheader, which they paid billions of dollars for. So it's uh, a very strong place in the world of television and the world of professional sports and media that AEW sits in right now. And uh, now Ring of Honor, um, because of those relationships, I think is in a better position than it's ever been before to capitalize and hopefully we can bring Ring of Honor to a great audience. Um, and I know Warner, I'm so grateful. I mean, they've changed our lives. I think it's really, I was saying to Rocky um, how we brought something back. I, I don't know if I've said this out loud before. Maybe I said it once in another interview, so I'm sorry if you've heard this one other time. I feel like I said it once out loud to outside of the back. Um, there was a, I think I did say this on the radio, so I'm sorry, but I'll just finish my thought. Uh, there was, for a long, so long there was wrestling on TNT and for a lot longer TBS, and it's just been a thing for a long time, and it was really cool we were able to bring it back we were able to bring it back. And uh, when we started AEW, I did not have a good relationship with New Japan. They were not happy about this. And uh, they did not trust me at all. And actually their partner at the time was Ring of Honor. And uh, it meant a lot that over the course of time, of course now I think Ring of Honor is in great hands. The history of Ring of Honor is in great hands. Uh, I'm very grateful to everybody that, that made tonight possible. Uh, but I was saying to Rock, how cool is it that we've put all this back together now? The New Japan Ring of Honor relationship is repaired. You see Minoru Suzuki is the new Ring of Honor TV champion. Great milestone, as we were saying, that it's the first championship in America Suzuki's ever won, which is pretty amazing with all the great championships he's won in his career. But also, looking, you know, this Ring of Honor moment uh, gave us a chance to reflect, but we were saying uh, recently it's pretty cool because, you know, there was wrestling on TNT and TBS for so long with WCW and then uh, it's like a big hole in my life as a fan. I think in you know, people's lives, I, maybe not everybody, but there's thousands of people. I think this was like a hole in our lives, whether we knew it or not, that like there should be wrestling on Turner. There should be wrestling on TNT, TBS. And it was great to bring it back, but it's also great to repair the relationship with New Japan and then be able to bring Yuji Nagata back to TNT and to be able to bring Ishii uh, to AEW and, and hopefully he can come back again and bring other great stars from New Japan that haven't been over here yet. And now to bring Suzuki to Ring of Honor and have him be the TV champion. And so many great stars from AEW have gone to New Japan. And again, that's a relationship. I think it's the, the, the wrestling company that's on TNT and TBS, it just feels right. They should have a relationship with New Japan. And Ring of Honor should have a relationship with New Japan and now it's all uh, come together. So I think that's really cool. Mike? Hi Tony, Mike from Lucha Libre Online. Yeah. So I have a question. You're already basically living out your dream. You have you made and you have your own wrestling company, right? Now you buy a second one for yourself. How much pressure are you feeling right now that you have to produce all of the AEW shows and book them? And now you have another baby that you gotta take care of. I feel like we got through a really good week. I could, the week, this was a really high pressure week with Dynamite, Rampage, and Supercard. And now I that all three shows have aired and been, been shown to the world. I feel great about all three shows. Dynamite was really, I thought, an excellent show top to bottom. I felt great about it. It did a great number. Again, it was one of the top three shows on cable. And it's up like, something like, I don't know, 30% year over year, something like up a big number, ballpark 30% year over year, which is tremendous performance for anything on cable. And when you look at how uh, the universe of cable is trended to be up 30% year over year without factoring in any cord cutting or anything like that, it's outstanding. And uh, 
it, it, you know, within the world of wrestling, it's, it, it, it is the best number year over year of anybody's done, which is really awesome. And I really am uh, very proud of what we did this week because not only do we have a great dynamite, but then went out tonight and obviously, you know, I felt good about Rampage uh, airing tonight, but as I've said, and went through those matches, but then tonight it was a lot of pressure to do something I've never done before, which is a Ring of Honor show. And it's not like an AEW show because I know the spirit of AEW because I've been at every single show we've ever done and there's not a match that's ever happened in AEW where I wasn't in the chair. And, uh, but there at Ring of Honor has never been a match where I was in the chair and there's been 20 years of matches. So it's a lot of history and there's a lot of fans and there's thousands of fans all over the world and I'm shocked at, I don't know the final number yet, but just based on the digital projection I just got, I'm shocked. Uh, it is multiple times what uh, anybody had ever projected for this show. So the interest in the new Ring of Honor around the world uh, is obvious and, and you heard that great crowd and saw the great crowd that we got, which was not uh, the crowd that this show was tracking for before we signed the purchase agreement last month and, and especially since we started announcing these new matches. Uh, so there's really exciting things happening in the world of pro wrestling. Obviously there's a lot happening in pro wrestling and I'm, I'm not naive to that being uh, where I am right now. Uh, there's a reason I'm getting out of town. And uh, so uh, I think uh, I'm very excited about uh, what we're doing and I think it's a great time to be a wrestling fan and there hasn't been this many things I think happening in pro wrestling until these last few years in a long time and uh, certainly haven't been this many wrestling shows on national television as we get now. So it's, it's awesome I think and it's great for the fans and especially uh, for the men and women of the company. Uh, AEW and now Ring of Honor as well. And, uh, you know, one thing I'll say is I don't know where the future of it is, but tonight being such a great success and the support of the fans, that's going to help a lot. Like when you watch the shows, when you watch AEW, when you watch Ring of Honor, like you're helping. You're helping me, you're helping the wrestlers, you're helping give us a chance. And I really appreciate it. And I think what's awesome about the wrestling fans and what I really try to do, and I, I think we've done a good job of doing is, you know, I watch wrestling for 30 something years. And I've seen companies go get in a pattern where they don't listen to the fans. And look, anybody in this position is gonna make a mistake every once in a while. Nobody bats a thousand, but what's really cool, I think, is like if we make a mistake here or there, uh, we've always tried to listen and make it better. And I think the fans really do know and appreciate that because like we have a really good track record of coming through on our promises. And then if we do something on a show that isn't exactly what people expected or what they wanted to see, I do try to listen to that. I can't always give everyone exactly that week what they expect. A lot of times things are happening and, and they're going somewhere and there's a plan. And uh, I just know that the loyalty and support of our fans is what made this show possible. And now the loyalty and support that we got from everyone here in the building tonight and on pay-per-view is why I think there's a really good future for Ring of Honor. So it's a, it's a really good question you, you guys so asked. Pressure. Uh, well, no, not really. I mean, like, what's the, I, like now the pressures, I, I, like, the pressure compared to what it was uh, maybe like at the beginning of the week, I feel like we just like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's like after you w win the big game or whatever, like on Sunday, like, I, I, and I know how it feels. I've been on both sides of it in sports, like in real sports, you know, in competitive team sports, not uh, in just in pro wrestling, but in like the world of team sports. And uh, I'm telling you, like I've been on both sides of it and you take wins and losses here too. So in terms of uh, uh, the pressure here, it's very different than what you feel on like a Sunday in the NFL or on a weekend or like a Premier League game or in the championship. Uh, but it's still a similar kind of game day pressure. And today was like, a, like I said, a really weird game day because I've like never come here before. And it's a lot of pressure because if you don't, so like I was feeling a lot of pressure. <laughs> like, does that make sense? No, not right now, no, I feel great. Like, uh, because like I was feeling a ton of pressure because like Connor asked, like it's like, what's the future of Ring of Honor? Like, and like Nick's, Nick very positively received the show. It sounded like the fans really liked the show and, all, and the boys and the girls in the locker room really liked it. So I'm excited about it, but at the same time, like yeah, I was feeling a ton of pressure going in because like for the very, big question Connor is asking that's the the gajillion dollar question which is like what is this going to be what is the future what next for Ring of Honor well like hitting a home run tonight was really important and we I feel like we hit a home run so now uh, like you know I'm gonna walk out there and I'm about to get a Gatorade bath <laughs> so like no, I feel great I'm just like uh, hopefully I don't ruin my jacket <laughs> thank you
Adam Wilborn, What Culture Wrestling, Tony, great show tonight. Um, what are your thoughts on, on Brian Cage's performance? Because I think a lot of people, myself included, were sort of questioning what was next for him. And uh, he, he really seems to go out there and, and make a statement, you know, now being part of Tony Blanchard and Enterprises. Your thoughts on that, mate? Right? I really like Brian Cage. I've always really liked Brian Cage. Uh, and uh, it was funny because when I first started thinking this might be a possibility, uh, I hadn't worked Brian Cage kind of back into my plans yet. And I couldn't tell Brian Cage, especially when like we're in a confidential, confidential discussion that like, hey, I'm, I'm like, you know, based on where we were going with him, you know, I thought Ricky and Team Taz and Will Hobbs are in a really strong position right now. And obviously with Swerve and Keith Lee coming in, it didn't really make sense to have Brian uh, fighting Ricky and Will anymore because right now Swerve had a great main event last week with Ricky and this week Will had a great main event with Keith and if you guys haven't watched the show yet it doesn't look like the whole situation I mean there was a kick-ass match and a kick-ass situation after it was a good show and for Brian I didn't think it made sense for him around Taz and those guys anymore I also thought him and Tully here could be a really good situation especially when FTR and Tully were done uh, so it was like, it's funny because I really couldn't, because of the situation with the confidentiality and stuff, I couldn't tell Brian, like, I want to buy Ring of Honor and put and re debut you and repackage you here until, the, you know, about a month ago. Uh, so it was funny because, like, Brian, I love, God love Brian, uh, he, like, told the media I picked up his contract, or somebody told I picked up his contract. I was like, Jesus, Brian, why'd you tell people that? <laughs> like, I never told him not to, but I also couldn't tell him what I was doing with it. But I should have told him not to. But that being said, I think it was good because like people wanted to see him come back, and it made it that much better. There were a bunch of moments tonight that were like real. I took stuff that happened in real life and tried to leverage it for like cool stuff to add a little bit more intrigue to a pay per view that already had great matches and great bell to bell wrestling, and uh, tons of real life interest in stuff like FTR and Briscoes, which the guys had built up. I didn't know I was gonna buy. ROH and if somebody else had bought it they would have gotten the benefit of the stuff we did for Final Battle and I was fine with that. I knew that I might not end up with the company and it didn't really look like I was going to end up with the company. I didn't, my gut was that I probably wouldn't but I still felt like the right thing to do uh, in December was at first to send like videos and tributes from all the great Ring of Honor wrestlers uh, in AEW, not all of them but a, but a bunch of them, a lot of the great people, uh, a lot of the great stars and top stars in AEW who used to be in Ring of Honor. And I, I was happy to do that for them. And then when Bandito got COVID, I was very happy to send Jay Lethal. Did I know that was gonna pay off in a great angle? I would like, later, no, I didn't. But sometimes these things work out very well. And uh, so I did a lot of stuff, including send FTR to that show, send Jay Lethal to that show, and send in a lot of videos from stars like you know, CM Punk and Brian Danielson and Adam Cole were so grateful for. And um, then, uh, you know, this, this thing really came together, culminated, paid off. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, uh, a, a lot of things came together uh, really well, and uh, Brian Cage is one of them. So the whole thing worked out really well. And I was really happy for him and for Tully, because I think it's a great uh, situation, a great repackage for both of them. Obviously, FTR, great night for them. So I think. It's worked out for everyone in that situation really well. Team Taz doing very well. Brian's doing well, and so so on. So it's great. Will, hi Tony. Hey, uh, congratulations <laughs> on uh, the success of the show. Um, one of the things you mentioned was the show staying true to the essence of Ring of Honor, and uh, I think if you look at some of the feedback online. Um, you can see that a lot of Ring of Honor fans are kind of satisfied with how true the show stayed to the essence of Ring of Honor. Um, however, one of the things that fans of Ring of Honor over the last year have been really satisfied with has been um, the women's division in Ring of Honor. Uh, in how the division kind of launched last year, we saw Roxy become the initial Ring of Honor women's champion and then um, the bell kind of transitioned so on from there. Um, the person running that division at the time was Maria Kanellis, Um and she's been fairly vocal online about wanting to get a conversation in with you. Is that a conversation you're interested in having um, and resuming some of the direction that Ring of Honor had last year with the women's division? Sure. It was a very different show at the time. I don't really have the same TV platform at this point. so. Uh, I would be interested in talking to Maria, sure, yeah, absolutely. I think she's a great wrestler and I've heard great things about what she did here. Um, I do have 
a staff and direction in mind when I relaunch the show. Um, I have a lot of talent in mind, including some people that have wrestled here before and some people that haven't wrestled here before. I was really excited to bring AQA in tonight. Uh, and uh, I was excited about bringing AQA in general. Ironically, uh, I scouted AQA in the Tony Storm match. And uh, she wrestled Tony Storm uh, on TV last year. And actually, I called Sanjay and I was looking for somebody to wrestle Jade. And I called Sanjay and I said, I really like this Tony Storm versus AQA match. I like this AQA. And she did really well and t Tony was great. And did you remember this match? And he said, yeah, I coached that match. And I said, okay, great. And tell me about AQA. And uh, because she had recently gotten released. And uh, she's, she's been excellent uh, working with her. She's worked on Dynamite. She's worked on AEW Dark and Elevation. And now also here in Ring of Honor. Uh, and there's more talents like that have wrestled here in Ring of Honor before, uh, and some that like you know like Willow is a great example. Obviously, recently been wrestling here in Ring of Honor. Uh, Mercedes is a legendary wrestler for Ring of Honor and a legendary wrestler in the division, and now a great interim champion. Diana uh, is a little bit of an interesting situation because she is the lineal champion, but she also has other contractual obligations with other companies. Uh, so I don't know when we'll get to decide the undisputed title, uh, but there's a lot of exciting stuff happening uh, in the division. I would be excited to talk to Maria, um, and depending on what she did backstage, I don't know exactly, like, uh, you know, uh, for example, during the matches, was, was she on the headset, was she, I don't know exactly, you know, was she uh, giving, you know, I, I don't know about that, like, uh, is she a notes-taking producer, I'm not sure, it's about stuff I'll maybe learn from her. Um, as far as like the creative and stuff, I do have a plan which I think like unfolded through the night and played out pretty well. So I have a lot of ideas, but I'm always down to take ideas from other people and a lot of the ideas I eventually do, do come from other people and I try and organize them and make them work with what I have. But I also get, uh, I mean I get pitched over 100 ideas a week and most of them I don't do. So like, I mean who am I kidding, like 80% of them I usually don't do. Because you get asked too many things and like how can you possibly do something when like five different people are asking you to work with the same 20, you know what I'm saying? Like you have like multiple people that want to work with the same person. Well you can't do it with everyone. And everyone's like, oh you never listened to my idea. Well okay, but like the person you're asking to work with, there's like five different people, seven, eight different people that came to me with an idea this week, I want to wrestle this person, I want to, you can't do it. So uh, that's why being able to keep things organized, and I think like you know, that's why we've had a good flow of the shows. Um, so as far as coaching, I'm probably more to be more specific to your answer. I'm probably more interested in coaching right now than I am in booking. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, man. Joel. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Thank you. So Tony, um, all in. AEW, Ring of Honor, you have made deals with uh, in the past with Impact, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, um, NWA. What, 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 what is that this, that you desire? Anything else that you desire in the pro wrestling business? You know, to do for the pro wrestling business. Uh, I just, it's really hard to do this every week, and I don't take it for granted. And like, how many times? Is there anybody in here who's watched all the Nitros and Thunders through more than once? If anybody, show hands. It always ends the same way, doesn't it? It always ends the same way. And it's when you take your eye off the ball and it's sad that it ends that way, isn't it? Every time and you want it to go differently. And now, and I'm the last person in the world who should want it to go differently. I'm literally like the last person on the planet who should be hoping that that turned out differently than it did. But, uh, but yet, I watch it and it's still hard to watch. And uh, I never want that again for the fans. And uh, I think it was hard transition period and I hated the uncertainty for the fans of Ring of Honor of what was gonna happen because it wasn't in my decision. I wasn't the one who decided what was gonna, you know, all I could do is make my best offer. And thankfully it was good enough and it was accepted. And uh, I knew that immediately there were things I could do uh, to help this company. And obviously as soon as I knew that they were going to accept my offer and that this was going to go forward. I knew I had a lot of wrestlers in AEW already that could go back, like a Jay Lethal, like a Lee Moriarty, Mercedes Martinez, even Willow, who wrestled in Ring of Honor, but has also been a regular in AEW for a long time. And uh, reaching out to Samoa Joe, uh, it made a lot of sense uh, when the timing was right. Uh, I couldn't do it uh, right away necessarily, but uh, well, it worked out and it, it's a great story and I think uh, it was a great night. So. Um, 
for me, I just want to keep it going. I would like to keep, and that involves the fans. Like, I can't do it. I need all of you. And it involves the fans and the media, and it involves the people covering wrestling. And, uh, you know, I don't ask anybody to sugarcoat it. I just want people to watch the wrestling and give it a chance. Sometimes uh, it's hard because it's not hard. I'm like, yeah, it's great. I have the easiest job in the world. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I get, uh, sometimes I, I work myself up because I feel like AEW, because we do things the right way and have good shows pretty regularly, and, and there's a decent amount of wrestling in most, well, almost every episode. If, there's a, if we ever get away, with, away from something or do something that people don't like, I feel like people are almost very quick, sometimes, sometimes, but I also don't take the support for granted. But sometimes I think we get held to a different standard than other people. And I, that's okay because I think we, we probably did that to ourselves and it's a good thing because if people have liked the shows that much where people have said that many positive things about um, uh, the pay-per-views and the TV shows we've done, I think it's a really good thing. I also think that the quality of AEW and the, and the quality of the recent pay-per-views, the three biggest pay-per-views in terms of buy rates we've ever done have been the last three and they've arguably also been the three best pay-per-views we've ever done with Revolution, Full Gear, and All Out. That's our, our three biggest commercially and probably our three best. And so it sets a high standard of performance and I think people wonder what was going to happen with Ring of Honor. and. And I really felt like we lived up to our expectations, which is great. Like, um, there's been shows that had really good matches and really good moments on them, like All Out 2020. And that's like a really good example because like I would go back and do things totally different about that show again if I could. But I also think there's a lot of really great stuff on All Out 2020. And like, you know, so I think there's, you know, I still look at the positives there, but when you do a show like this, where pretty much everything comes off perfect, or like Revolution last month, where everything's great, and really our last few shows, um, and where the, the fans are happy, and the wrestlers are happy, and, uh, you know, coming out really positive in terms of injuries, because it's a very dangerous sport, uh, and everyone's okay, it seems like, which is great. Uh, that's always a great thing. So no, I, there's nothing else I want except to keep the fans watching AEW and now to keep fans interested in Ring of Honor and the fan interest and what the fans here in the Dallas Metroplex and all the people who came and traveled here for, for, for this show or for whatever show they came here for, the people who are here tonight and uh, the thousands and thousands of people who bought the show on pay-per-view way beyond anybody's wildest expectations or what really probably mean that there's a really good future for Ring of Honor, I have a good feeling. Thank you. A few more for Tony. Damien? Tony, uh, great show overall. Got a little bit of uh, an orange lifer from back in New York City, so it, it was good to see it here in DFW uh, come to life. You mentioned your vision for it eventually, where even though you don't know where it's going to go, and today was the first day you were in the chair, so to speak, for Ring of Honor. Uh, who will you lean on going forward if you are to cultivate your vision? Who are you going to lean on so you don't burn yourself out on both ends because you want to get into the coaching aspect? Yeah. So who, besides you being a coach, what other people do you want to Well, I'm saying, I meant, I, what, I, what I meant by that answer, by the way, for Will, is I'm saying, like, in terms of hiring, like, I, the booking, I think I would have a good handle on, actually. And I, I listen to a lot of people and will certainly solicit ideas from a lot of people, but also I think a lot of this show came out of one place that came pretty good and uh and uh so i'm very happy with it and i'm very happy with uh where we are creatively and a lot of our stuff but i also anytime anybody wants to bring me an idea i'll uh, if i can make it work and if i like it like i'm going to do my best and that's something everybody who's ever worked with me knows uh especially people who've successfully pitched me anything and so like uh what i would say about it is I, there's also for, for ideas for coaching for you know Matt either ideas in the, the match especially but also in long term direction the coaches are so valuable we have great people in AEW who also were here tonight they're former Ring of Honor wrestlers and they were involved in the coaching aspect you know uh, Christopher Daniels QT Marshall Sanjay Dutt a lot of great people also uh, you know other great wrestlers Serena Deeb has been here Serena Deeb in the coaching and so um, a number of great people that that can get involved on screen and off screen, uh, who I work with really closely. Um, and I do a lot with, uh, you know, as far as helping me put shows together, I think Sanjay and QT do a great job every week. QT's been here a long time. Sanjay is newer, uh, has stepped up big time. Uh, and uh, those guys are, are two essential people, for sure. They were here tonight and they do, they do a great job, uh, they, on screen and off screen. Although Sanjay on screen tonight, what a <laughs> son of a bitch. Let's go with Reg and then Phil. 
Rochester Edge Pro Wrestling Illustrated, good afternoon to the podcast. Why do you hate this weekend so much? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. I love this yeah, weekend. I love tonight. Yeah, yeah. Friday's great. Yeah. <laughs> but what I was leading to is, um, for me, I've been to a bunch of these weekends you know, surrounding other companies, but specifically uh, talking about tonight's show, I've watched a lot of great Ring of Honor shows during this you know, crazy weekend. And so what you're saying is this is the last Ring of Honor show I'll ever see. I what do you mean? Episode? Why do you think you're gonna come to some, oh, please Reg come to some more Ring of Honor? No, show. no, I'm saying for this like, you know, that's a year more, that's a year in advance, but yeah. man, it's soul crushing to have to book that. Right. <laughs> but it was already booked, but man, I think we can draw uh, without coming here. But on the other hand, it's a tradition for the fans who do come here. And to be honest, I never looked at it like that until you said it like that. And now you're making me feel really bad. <laughs> Maybe I should come. Well, AEW, I always said AEW was never going to come and do yes. this. And I stuck to that. I never said Ring of Honor would never come and do it. And actually, okay. we've done it once. So maybe I should do it, and I'll just get the hell out of town on Friday night. Uh, but that also gives them a year to counter-program and come up with some bullshit <laughs> thing to do to me. So, uh, but uh, that being said... <laughs> what do you want to do? Double or nothing weekend. <laughs> well, that could be cool too. Uh, there's a lot of great wrestling on these on these pay per view weekends, and it's something to think about. And I've, I, I, that's an idea. The I, you know I love ideas, and I never thought of that till the IWC brought it up. And sometimes the IWC floats things, and I don't know if it was you you first or somebody else, <laughs> but I did see somebody say that. I never thought about that, but it's a hell of an idea. The only thing is, from Friday we do the fan fest on Saturday. Mm -hmm. From do Rampage the fan fest. Possibly Ring of Honor. If I and this is all depending on I, you know, again, I have a TV contract. I have to run things by Warner Media and do everything the right way. But it's a hell of an idea, and uh, it's very creative. But it is a, a lot on the weekend, and uh, you know, I'll be interested. We'll see how the crowd is this weekend. If they're, <laughs> but uh, but but uh, you know, uh, no, it's something to uh, think about. That's I mean, it's a hell of an idea with Double or Nothing and All Out and and your Revolution and all the great weekends we create. Um, it would probably work better with Double or Nothing All Out and Revolution versus Full Gear because Full Gear is the only one that's on a Saturday, whereas the others are all on Sundays. Um, but uh, it's something to think about for sure. But again, uh, hitting a home run in terms of the performance of this thing and showing that you know it was the number one trending thing in the world on Twitter uh, and the huge pay-per-view buys and that we were able to do it the right way, I think uh, bodes really well for the future. So I, that's why. I, I was saying before, I don't feel the pressure so much anymore. I feel pretty good. Phil, well, and then second row, and then uh, that's a wrap. Phil, yeah. can, can I do one thing real quick? Sorry, I feel like I did not write by Reg real quick. So, Reg, I'll cons thanks to you, I would consider it, and you've opened my mind up to something I probably hadn't considered before, because I never looked at your perspective on how people see the event, like, because, you know, because that's, that's very fair. And I'm the first person who always says, watch your wrestling. Right. And like I said, I never wanted AEW to, to piggyback on anyone's shows, but this is, you're right, it's a Ring of Honor tradition that goes way back. So, uh, you know, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. So I, I have to look at it that way. So thank you. All right. In 2009, my first whatever weekend, I went to an ROA show, and I still think about that show very often. So. Yeah, well, you're right. It's a, you're probably right. It's probably made a lot of new, it has. I'm sure it has made a lot of new fans, and I never looked at it that way. So you may have actually changed my thinking on it. So thank you. No Thanks, Reg. Uh, you talked about sorry, for, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, you talked about um, you know, of course, bringing back um, somebody like Blood well, Nightingale and other people that have done Dark and some of your AW shows. Um, another name that's done AW shows is Trisha Dora. Is there any interest in bringing her back to Ring of Honor? Yeah, I like Trisha Dora. Um, and actually. Um, I, I would have been interested. She was on a short list of people for that interim match that I would have considered. I, I do like her, and uh, there's you know the women we used. I think are great, and I brought in AQA from AEW, uh, and you know Alizé's been here in Ring of Honor before. She's great, and uh, obviously I know Willow and Mercedes very well. Um, but I like Trish, and uh, yeah, she was actually one of the people I considered for that uh, spot, one of the spots out here, and uh, so yeah, absolutely, yeah, I would. Um, but it's good to hear you like her. I, I think she's great too. So, uh, and I've seen her on Ring of Honor, uh, mostly in the empty arena shows. I've seen her a lot of shows where there weren't fans, and it's hard to sometimes tell. But I also like Cash was saying, like a lot, you know, a lot of people learned from that and became better wrestlers. I saw people really evolve, and then I know that when the fans came back at the twenty-five percent capacity, you know, the on a bad night maybe it was six, seven hundred people, and on a good night it was twelve hundred people, and it felt like anywhere from. 
5,000 to 25,000 because like we were so used to not having them. So uh, I watched her uh, and I really liked her and I thought it was impressive that she was doing it in matches with no fans and, uh, and you know, connecting through the camera, which is like a really good sign because that's what a lot of the people, like to your point, who really um, connected like her on dark, although there, you know, she she was good on she was good on uh, there, but I I probably saw her more and actually thought I saw her connect more in this past year in Ring of Honor, if that makes sense, in some of the TV matches uh, that they did with her, and that's one of the reasons why I did consider her for a spot here, and she would be a good person to bring back. So thanks, Phil. That's a good question. I can do. Uh, I, is there anybody who did not get to ask me a question? Just in the second row, and then we should be covered. Good evening, Tony. Matt Bishop, Slam Wrestling. Uh, so the Briscoes had obligations with Impact tonight as well. Uh, did that, not to throw the phrase, but did that impact how you <laughs> formatted the show tonight? No, uh, because I thought it would be, a, it was obviously going to be a great match, and I also thought that it made a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Um, if you look at how everything was formatted, it's for a bunch of reasons, and I just thought it was like a, you know, there's no one reason you do things sometimes when you're putting formats together, but tonight was a little different because I had two shows on. So um, I thought it would be, you know, if you look, Swerve was the first thing on the pay-per-view and he's the last thing on Rampage. Young Bucks uh, were out and then the way it went, uh, they were on, you know, not long after that, they were on Rampage and the two, the, the, and, uh, and if, for the, you know, they referenced it on, they never said it because I didn't want to spoil on Rampage what happened. Uh, so we didn't say it was for the Ring of Honor belts. We said it was for the AAA belts. But what they say, if you watch their promo on Rampage, is like, by now, everyone knows we accepted your challenge. So it didn't really spoil the pay-per-view for anyone that was DVRing it. But it was like, if you've watched both, it was a little bit of a, it was a, little bit of a Rick Rude, two places, one night moment for them and for Swerve. And uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, um, you know, it's, I don't know. It, 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 having gone through it, like having been through this, um, when I when I from from like the beginning to the end, it's probably one of the more surreal experiences I've ever had in pro wrestling uh, because I've never been unfamiliar in my own company with some things and some people before. Like we we all started from scratch together, and to come into something new and like meet new people, it was really different. Um, but. What was your question again, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, come on. It was with the Briscoes appearing. In the yeah, okay, so no, like I didn't, so the deal was with Joe coming, uh, again, this is also surreal and like talking about it and like I've never had to deal with this with people having like bookings on other stuff mm -hmm. and like it didn't really play into it because I think they were on last, aren't they on last on the other show anyway, I think? So it ruined, they, I think it could have gone on last, but I also thought that like with Joe coming, it made a lot of sense and it wasn't just Joe, but there, we did so much at the end of the show. Like you saw so many things, like the relationship between Gresham and Lethal, the tag team champions for a long time and the mentor protege relationship they have, something that came to light at the end of Final Battle and also at Death Before Dishonor, uh, you know, with Moriarty and Lethal. Uh, and to have Moriarty out there at, after that, when the moment with Gresham and Lethal breaks down, Sanjay getting involved. If you know Sanjay and Jay well, they're best friends. I mean, Sanjay and Jay Lethal have been best friends for 20 years. And so I know how much, how the kind of chemistry they have. I think there's a great thing brewing there. And then to have them out there with Gresham and, and, and uh, Lethal and uh, Moriarty and Sanjay, and then to have Samoa Joe show up. I thought it was a really powerful moment, and it did a lot of things. So did what we what we did at the end of Briscoe's and FTR. But I also thought it would be a, a great thing to have the undisputed title match on last, and it worked out well for everybody. So their schedule and their other bookings. I mean, they're the Ring of Honor champions coming in tonight. So I think that was what everybody's concern was first and foremost. And whatever uh, whatever ends up happening tonight, I wish them the best in the match. I think they're wrestling the Good Brothers, I believe, who are also great great people. And I wish all four guys the best, but I, I don't think that was the big concern of what we were doing. I think we want, they wanted to have a great, great match with FTR they've been looking forward to, and that was their focus. And for me, I wanted to make sure that went on and, uh, and probably in the right timing. And then we had great stuff after that with Suzuki winning his first American championship versus Rhett Titus, who's been so important here to Ring of Honor, with, uh, of course, Wheeler Yuta 
winning the pure title and then announcing after all this time and the big week he had with the match with Brian Danielson that Wheeler U is all elite. And uh, of course, that, that great main event in Samoa Joe. So I thought the way it all flowed was probably perfect. So the, 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 them having the other bookings wasn't what it was about, really. It was probably about the flow of the show and, and everything tonight in this crazy universe. So going back to uh, when I took myself off track, because I was thinking about what a crazy, surreal night it is, because like I've never, there's never been so many moving pieces. And like when he asked me before about like the pressure and how do I feel about that and like do it you know it felt like a huge amount of pressures off because it was doing something we've never done and we did it so that's always really cool thank you guys for this uh, i really appreciate you all being here and, and it was because of you guys and 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 ladies and everybody here uh that the show was such a great success and you're all awesome and i know everybody in the room loves pro wrestling and that makes me feel really good about it so thank you, thank you.